Everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Ashwarya Pattab. This video is part of our new series which mainly focuses on Autosar interview questions. Each part includes three Autosar questions along with the answer which significantly enhances your preparations for the upcoming interviews. So without any further delay, let's begin with part 2 of our Autosar interview questions. Well, we are back to screen mode where you can see Autosar interview question part 2 along with three questions. Let us quickly jump into our first question which basically states, explain Otisa architecture. You can answer to this question in the following format. The Otisa architecture is based on three-layer architecture module developed jointly by the stakeholders of automotive industry including the automobile manufacturers, the suppliers and the tool developers. This is a layered architecture with three components that is application layer, runtime environment and basic software layer. Let us look into three of them individually. The first one is application layer. This layer contains the software component responsible for implementing the vehicle's functionalities such as engine control, transmission management, braking and infotainment systems. These software components known as application software components are designed to be modular and reusable, allowing for flexibility and adaptability in the software design. Moving on to our next one that is runtime environment which is also called as RTE. The RTE layer serves as an intermediate between the application layer and the underlying hardware platform. It it provides standardized communication services and interfaces that enable software components to interact with each other and with the hardware. The RTA ensures proper scheduling and execution of software tasks, enforcing timing constraints and managing resource allocation within the ECU. Going on to the next layer, that is basic software layer, which is also known as BSW layer. It contains low-level software modules that provide essential system services and hardware abstraction functions. These modules include drivers for communication interfaces such as CAN, Ethernet, diagnostic services, memory management, and operating system functions. The BSW layer abstracts hardware-specific details, enabling software portability and reusability across different ECU platforms. In detail explanation of all the three layers is present in our AutoSAP playlist. You can have a look for better understanding. Now, let us quickly jump into our next question that is question number two. And the question goes like this. What is the difference between RTE and Virtual Functional Bus? You can answer to this question specifically having around three to four differences. The first difference is based on scope of communication. Let's start with RTE. Communication facilitated by the RTE is limited to software components within the same ECU. It manages the exchange of data between variables within the same runtime environment. On the other hand, Virtual Functional Bus extends communication capabilities across ECUs, allowing software components on one ECU to interact with those on the other ECU through a virtual communication infrastructure. Let's move on to the next difference which is based on deployment. The RTE is deployed within each individual ECU where it facilitates communication among software components running on that ECU. Whereas, on the other hand, Virtual Functional Bus is deployed across multiple ECUs within a distributed automotive system, serving a virtual communication layer that spans the entire network. Moving ahead to our next difference which is based on responsibilities. The RTE is responsible for managing the execution environment including scheduling tasks, managing inter-component communication, memory allocation and error handling within a single ECU. Whereas on the other hand, Virtual Functional Bus is responsible for providing a standardized communication infrastructure that enables communication between software components across different ECUs. It handles message routing, transformation, scheduling and error handling in a distributed system. Going on to our last difference which is based on communication protocols. RTE often utilizes low-level communication protocols such as CAN, LIN for inter-issue communication. Whereas on the other hand, Virtual Functional Bus supports a variety of communication protocols including CAN, Ethernet and Flexray for inter-issue communication depending on the network topology and the requirement of the automotive systems. Well, these were few differences between RTE and Virtual Functional Bus. Let us quickly move on to our next question that is question number 3 which basically states explain the purpose of MCAL layer. Here, you need to be very specific and only talk about what exactly the MCAL layer is doing. 
MCAL stands for Microcontroller Abstraction Layer. It is a software layer in Autosa architecture that provides an abstraction layer between the hardware and the rest of the software components in the system. MCAL manages the allocation and configuration of microcontroller resources such as GPIO pens, timers, and interrupts. It ensures that the hardware resources are properly initialized, configured, and utilized according to the requirements of the software component running on the ECU. MCAL includes services for handling real-time events events, managing interrupts, and coordinating timing-sensitive operations, ensuring proper timing behavior and deterministic execution of software tasks. It includes diagnostic and error handling functionalities to monitor the health and status of microcontroller peripherals and hardware components as well. It provides mechanism for detecting and reporting hardware faults, errors, fault tolerance in automotive systems. So these were the few purposes of MCAL layer. For detailed explanation of all the three questions, you can watch our Autosar playlist. Well, this was part 2 of our Autosar interview question series. I hope you found the video insightful. For any queries, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.